I'm excited to see where you guys are going. It sounds like you have a very firm understanding of, of what's required to grow the project. What are you looking forward to the rest of the year through 2023? Is there anything outside of Famojis that you're actively watching or that's caught your interest that you just passionately enjoy? A lot of it's changing so quickly with all those <laughs> Like next week, who knows? It might be completely different. I think reinscriptions could be interesting. So I've been thinking about something which we could do with our Genesis, which could be pretty cool with reinscriptions. When initially I thought, oh, how can we use that as a benefit? But I've got an idea that could be pretty cool. I won't sort of spill too much on it yet. But I think reinscriptions is something that we could look into and could be something that can add value to inscriptions. It's not a, another token as such, but you can link it on the same set, which is kind of cool. So we're looking into that. And there's going to be heaps that pop up that sort of like with that post about at all those builders there's people doing stuff everywhere we don't know what will stick necessarily but there's going to be exciting stuff to come ordinal famojis in the house i'm here with sanj who is the creator of ordinal famojis and also the upcoming generate ord and he's also co-founder of the the 100k or sub 100k inscription club and this guy is all over the place and as as i was telling him right before we started recording i had no idea what a famoji was they just kind of just popped up on the timeline out of nowhere with over 0.1 bitcoin floor and then all of a sudden they're they're throwing around all kinds of things about famojis too and creating some sort of recursion playground and so i had to invite him over because i really need to figure out what, what's going on under the hood. So Sanj, appreciate you for coming on, bro. Yeah, thanks for having me. It's, we've definitely been pretty busy the last couple of months. So it's, no, it's good to sort of deep dive into it a bit more. It's, you can sort of chat a bit on spaces, but it's, it'd be cool to sort of dig into it a bit because we haven't really gone right right into the details yet. So it's no, it should be good fun. I'm stoked to be here. Another podcast virgin. Many, many fresh <laughs> ordinal builders First. in the space. It's it's very exciting, man. Oh, I think one of the, the recent ones that I had on was Tosio, who's also been growing quite well. And there, there's a ton of you guys. It's just, you know, it, it's very exciting because I've been in the space since 2016. So I've been around for a while. And when you hang out in ETH, you know, it's a lot of the same builders. There are, of course, there's a lot of rugs as well. And then those serial ruggers are around a ton too. So it's just like, it's <laughs> kind of the same thing. That's just like a, a repetitive cycle. So to see a lot of this, this like fresh wave of new builders, it's very exhilarating. And so it just leads me to the first question is just, dude, where did you come from, man? You, you, inscri <laughs> yeah. you inscribed the ordinal Famojis and we'll get into the story in a second from i think it was around the 20k inscription part so you were there pretty close but what, what were you doing beforehand were you just always around the crypto space or did you just happen to stumble across ordinals and just some random reason yeah no we've been around for a while so i've actually i mean like a lot of people i started on a probably i mean i've dabbled in crypto for quite a while but probably sort of early 2021 mid 2021 sort of just after apes i sort of missed the the initial apes and that sort of we'll never never forget that but we sort of i, I mean i was just a classic dj and sort of buying and selling pretty much everything for those sort of past two years on on eth and i'd always wanted to start a project and i sort of hooked up with swayze digital who's our artist sort of at the start of 2022 probably i, I sort of I actually just found him on twitter and sort of saw his stuff and thought this stuff's too good not to be doing more and then we we sort of went through a few different ideas of what we could do and we he, he ended up coming with this up with his Fomoji character sort of just out of the blue and we thought oh, it's, it's kind of cool little neat character sort of punk rock sort of vibes but and we we wanted to launch it on ETH and we got most of the artwork sort of done but ETH just got I don't know I don't know how to say it nicely but too saturated and <laughs> and too much of the same thing and we didn't want to just throw out a project and just sort of be like everyone else and so we kind of put it on ice for a bit and, and waited and then ordinals popped up sort of early or well, earlier this year and initially I think like a lot of people I saw Bitcoin NFTs and I'm like what is this Bitcoin NFTs there's, there's stuff on Counterparty and stuff and I just assumed it was that I thought that's not new and then it wasn't until I think Trevor's stub 10 or the 10k celebration spaces where I really sort of dug into it and so I, this is actually 100% on chain this stuff on, on Bitcoin and so pretty much as soon as that happened I, I messaged Swayze and I'm like we're going to smash this out as quick as we can and so the next 24 hours we sort of put together our Genesis 100 characters we had most of the artwork done but he sort of whipped up 100 characters and then we, we actually got Hashbender to inscribe for us so Nick from Luxa helped us inscribe which was good because I started setting up my node but like everyone it, it's a slow process so he just he got him in there pretty quickly and yeah the rest sort of went from there so it was it was a crazy I guess 48 hours when we started it, it sort of from 
initially deciding and then inscribing was only a day or two, but it was, no, it was good fun. And then it's just been building out from there, which has been pretty cool to see because it's, yeah, um, the Ordinals community is something that sort of I haven't really seen before. It's it's much different to Ethan. It's, yeah, it's been awesome to see. So it's been good fun. The Ordinal community is really a melting pot of multiple communities. You have the the Soul DGENs, right? You got the, the BSV infrastructure builders. You got the the ETH natives who are just familiar with, with technology and smart contracts. And then, of course, you have the, the Bitcoiners and, and the stack community as well. So I think it really adds this kind of diverse element of, of acceptance because everyone's really coming to it for, for different reasons. Of course, everyone wants to, you know, make money and, and build a legacy of some sort. But the camaraderie feels really tight, at least for now. You know, maybe maybe, it's, maybe, <laughs> maybe we do end up like Ethereum, you know, four or five years into the NFT journey and everyone's all of a sudden eating eating each other alive and, you know, <laughs> fudding. But who really knows, right? And I would like to just lead off with this first question is, you know, you look, you look at the the Famoji art, it really, you know, it's kind of, it looks like it's really representative of, you know, the 2021, 2022 kind of PFP era <laughs> on, on, on Ethereum. But on Bitcoin, you don't really see too much of, of that. So it really stands out, but it looks like something, you know, of ETH. So was the art, was this art, you mentioned was originally intended for for Ethereum. You put it on Bitcoin before you did, you know, kind of inscribe it onto Bitcoin. Was there any intentions to to change it based off of you know maybe this new culture that you might be entering? Yeah, it's an interesting point, and that's the thing I've sort of <laughs> we've I've gone over quite a few times. It's it was like it was originally meant for ETH, and that's why it's when we were doing the artwork. It was when doodles were massive and sort of quirkies and that sort of vibe. So it's you can definitely tell it. I guess comes from that sort of look and we were tempted to, to i guess tweak it but at that time we wanted to just get it on as soon as possible it was like we saw 10k and, and hash vendors like oh we probably got like maybe a week before 20k we should be right we'll just we'll just change it up a bit and then like sort of i woke up the next morning and it was at 15k and i'm like oh shit we got we got to just get them on there so we like we we ended up just sticking with what we had and for a long time we thought about well do we do we do another hundred or another certain amount early on and and have it more put more bitcoin culture into it and we sort of thought we didn't want to dilute the genesis too soon so we've waited for Famojis 2.0 which is which has got a bit more bitcoin culture in it it's still the same character but we've, it's a lot darker vibe it's it's got a lot more bitcoin i guess related traits and so we've, we've added a bit more bitcoin into it because i always the same sort of feeling it was it was initially designed for ETH, so it's a different vibe to what most of the bitcoin collections are which is it's kind of good because everyone's got different opinions so we're a bit unique in that way it's and i think that's probably why initially we took a while to get noticed because it, it was much less of that bitcoin vibe like it was most nearly all projects with like pixel art and, and that sort of thing so it's for a different vibe but it's 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 good it gives people i guess something different to look into and it's uh, yeah 2.0 will be a bit different it's a, it's a bit darker and sort of Bitcoin vibes. So and that should be good. Hey, we're 22 million inscriptions in, and it's still pixel art for the majority of it. Pixel, <laughs> pixel exactly. art. It was so much text. cheaper. <laughs> yeah, no, ki <laughs> no kidding. I, I mean, I hope, and I'm sure all, all of your community does as well. All you got to do is throw an orange background on the back of the, the next one. <laughs> yeah. and, and you are pretty good. We did whack it through a few orange backgrounds in there. But we didn't go too, too much on it, but yeah, no, we've, we've added the Bitcoin vibe to it a bit more. Before we dive into a little bit more of, you know, the mechanics and, you know, a little bit more of the, the granular, idea, granular idea of, of Fomojis, how would you describe yourself as a leader? What was your what was your background? I, I know you mentioned that you would hooked up with with the artist, Sway, I think you said it was Swayze. I saw on your website yeah. there was two others. Like, what do, what do you bring to the table that sets you apart of, of other founders? Yeah, so I actually, I mean, obviously I wasn't in NFTs my whole life. I, I actually started studied engineering and finance at uni and so I was sort of working in civil engineering for for a while not too long and then I sort of moved into crypto and web3 because I just I wanted to do something myself I sort of I always had that entrepreneurial sort of bug and wanted to to build something myself and it it just seemed like a place where you've got so much more freedom to to build what you want to do and so we've the actual the other two founders are actually my brothers they're sort of they still work full time in sort of the web2 world 
but Vanix, who's our dev, he's, I mean, he's just, he's a lot smarter than me and he's, he's done a lot of our recursive stuff, which he's kind of been doing some crazy stuff with that. So it's a lot of what we're doing is, I guess you could say we're, we're trying to build with the ordinals protocol because it's changing. So often. it's like, we don't want to set roadmaps and, and I guess lock ourselves into certain things because one week this is all the rage. And then the next week there's this whole new thing. Like when recursion came out, we're like, we got to get on this straight away. And we quickly sort of built out a whole lot of things. So we're, I'm, I'm not going to say where we have a roadmap as such, because it's, it's, it's definitely not that way. It's internal sort of, roadmap. That's right, what you keep the internal. Exactly, yeah. the <laughs> it's fluid. We're sort of, we want to be as flexible as possible. And I mean, at the core of it with Fumojis, it's the art and the, I guess you could say the low inscriptions are always going to be valuable in a sense, but we definitely want to, to add value and we're constantly looking at ways to do that so it's sort of we want to build with ordinals we don't want to just lock ourselves into something and then i guess in in a month's time that's that's not it anymore but it's been fun because it's we can sort of follow the github and when something pops up we quickly get onto it it's like it was cursed one week we quickly got some cursed in at like sub 3k and then they're still locked in the op 60 <laughs> the op 66 sort of thing <laughs> we can't transfer them yet but yeah, we've sort of gone down the recursion path now. I think that's going to be pretty massive. So yeah, it's going to be some exciting stuff with recursion. Yeah, uh, all the the kind of standards that have been proposed over the last six months or seven months of ordinal history, recursion seems to be the one that has the you know the highest degree of consensus that this is where everything is going. I know this recursion was was introduced by the the Ord core team, but it seems like this is where everyone's kind of gravitating around. But moving back to the the early story, came across this, and it's the yeah. hundred, yeah, the hundred Genesis ordinal emojis <laughs> inscribed for eternity on the Bitcoin blockchain. But this is on OpenSea, and I believe this yeah. was this was a method that that a, a lot of early collections used because one, they generally weren't familiar with the ordinal space. And also too, there was just really not that much infrastructure. You had like two wallets yeah. at the time. Xverse was still trying to figure it out. Ordinal's wallet had just popped up. Unisat didn't really exist. So there was uh, a lot of the, I would say the the founders and leaders of today leveraged Ethereum in the early days. But just to take me through this, this kind of experience of using the uh, Ethereum as this kind of redemption mechanism to, to get your ordinal. Yeah, we sort of, we rest with it for a long time because I, I wanted to stay as I guess as Bitcoin centric as, as possible since we were launching on Bitcoin and early days as you know it was sort of it was the infrastructure was not great and it was everyone trading on spreadsheets and that sort of thing and we initially we were going to be just straight ordinals but we sort of I guess a lot of what we do is we ask the community what they want and nearly all of them wanted wanted to start on ETH. They just weren't comfortable with holding their ordinals. Like they they much preferred us to hold them, which we were sort of like, well, this is decentralization. We want everyone to have it like it's trustless, but they preferred to trust us. So we went with what the community said. And so we launched sort of an ETH burn pass. And then like a few weeks later, they could they could burn it for the actual inscription and we just send it to them. So we we built a bridge that they can sort of burn it. And it's been pretty good. We've got, there's only three stragglers left on there. So we're, we've almost got them all over, but yeah, it's it worked well because it, it helps for people to sort of trade early on easily. Like, I mean, there wasn't a ton of volume, but there's like what, 29 ETH volume there. So it was a lot easier than trading on ordinals initially because this was before Magic Eden or any of that. It was, it was pretty tough to trade. So it worked well initially, but yeah, I'll be happy to get them all over onto, onto Bitcoin. It's sort of those last three sitting there hopefully we can get them over soon but yeah from now on it's going to be sort of more bitcoin centric we we tossed up going cross chain it was initially the part of well i guess an idea in our mind to try and be i guess try and bridge the gap between eth and bitcoin but the community seems to feel that it's bitcoin centric is the way to go so we're probably going to stick to that for now yeah there, there is a, a ton of interest of doing this cross-chain ideals but there is also this authenticity that comes with just maintaining uh, your community on bitcoin as a digital artifact and not requiring you know this move across as i as i've worked at emblem over the last eight months or so nine months we've been approached by a ton of ordinal and BRC20 kind of communities that are interested in the cross-chain ideals. The majority of them end up just, you know, they just want a general inquiry of what it takes. And then they kind of just say, hey, yeah, I think we're just going to stick over at Bitcoin for now until the infrastructure improves and decide because the ordinal community or the, the overall ordinal community is still quite small. 
I mean, I think as of today, at the time of this recording, there's maybe like 400,000 in trading volume in 24 hours. Meanwhile, you have Ethereum that's doing, you know, 10 to 15 million a yeah. day. So it's just, we're just a little... Yeah, it's a big difference still, yeah. We're a little drop in the bucket compared <laughs> compared to them, compared to, you know, the, I guess you'd say the big brother of the, the NFT ecosystem, although Bitcoin is a little bit older. But moving into, you know, where we sit today... And before we dive into or Fomoji's 2.0, how long did it take for you to really, you know, set up operations as a team? That that OpenSea page was said it was created in March, and now we're recording in August. And it, on here on your Ornal Fomoji's Twitter account, you teased the first of Fomoji's 2.0 towards the end of June. So there's maybe this like three month window of, I, I guess, trying to familiarize yourself with the community and figure out what you wanted to do. Take us through the mind of, you know, Sanj and tell us like, what did you do over those three months and, and how difficult or, or how difficult was that experience or did it come together a lot more frictionlessly than you expected? Yeah. Yeah, it was interesting. It was it was definitely a, I guess, a pretty fluid process of building out along the way. It's because we started small. It's only a hundred people. We sort of we wanted to really build our team from the community. Really, I feel like the most sort of passionate people are going to be people who actually own the, the project and want to be involved. So basically, all of our team are holders originally and then sort of decided to come on as part of the team and it, it's it's still basically volunteer sort of mods and that sort of thing but yeah between the genesis and the 2.0 we we sort of tried a few different things we had i guess the main thing was was upgrading the art for 2.0 to get that i guess more bitcoin feel to it and we we played around with a few different characters or a different changing it up but we felt to stick to the original character was probably good because there's only 100 we wanted i guess more out there it's the hundreds awesome to get a really tight knit sort of community but i think with any project to get that reach you need more than 100 people to be really noticed sort of on twitter and that sort of thing so the genesis is always going to be i guess the og and sort of everything we do will sort of the value will well, they'll be, get, be getting the maximum value out of it. But 2.0 is, I guess, the way to expand the community and give people a cheaper entry. It's sort of, we have a lot of people that want to get in and they can't quite afford it. So if we can, can have a bigger supply to allow more people to get in is, is helpful. So we sort of, we had that artwork done for a fair while, but we were, I guess, wanting to do something unique and, and innovative to, in a sense because it couldn't be low inscription numbers anymore obviously it's boomed over 10 million pretty quickly we wanted to do something that that people hadn't done too much of and that's when recursion sort of came in it like we actually didn't plan to be recursion before and we knew it was sort of on casey's i guess you could call it roadmap but we we didn't sort of plan it and then as soon as it was merged i think i was on on a trevor's podcast or something again he's like trevor's always got podcasts going and they sort of said oh recursion just merged and i sort of thought oh shit i gotta look into this and then pretty much the 48 hours after that again we were just like digging into it we did a few little experiments that we launched like we launched this recursive sort of viewer which are, i think probably 10 or 15 projects used to just shows your previous inscriptions sort of like a to view in one inscription which was kind of cool and then we we pretty much whipped up this i guess you'd call it recursive standard after that which that took a lot longer obviously because we wanted to make it as i guess efficient and and pretty much the same as a regular inscription like it, it renders the image exactly the same it's like you can right click save it and it's but it's it's super efficient because it's it's using html so the files are tiny so we yeah we spent a fair while on that and then we inscribed it sort of in june i think can't remember the date now but so yeah it was a few changes over the time but i feel like this recursion thing was worth the wait so i'm happy it sort of came up yeah and it sounds like you've really had your hands full even kind of moving past the Fomojis, it says on your in your bio that you're a co-founder of the sub 100k club and it seems like there's there's always clubs down the board right you have the the sub 1k club there's the sub 10k <laughs> club sub 100k 1 million it's just it just kind of goes on forever what inspired you to create the 100 the sub 100k club and how has that been going so far is there anything really special about this outside the inscription number or is this created just as a means to bring the the bring the the communities together who are essentially the equivalent of these early pioneers yeah it was basically that we sort of it, it never started off as something to be i guess to be much it was because all of our projects were like a hundred supply it was 
there was so few people in each community. We sort of thought, well, why not just get a whole bunch of communities together? And it, it didn't initially plan to be a club as such. It's It was just a bunch of other founders that I knew or that I didn't actually start it. Someone else sort of, I guess, started the Discord originally. And then we all sort of came in there and sort of thought, oh, well, we should actually make something of this. And so there's, there's about eight of us that sort of decided to keep on building with it. And it's it's basically just a hub for people to go to want to learn more about ordinals. It's There's no set in stone plans for it. It's it's just, I guess, a way to sort of bring the communities together because there was all these small communities couldn't do as much by themselves because they didn't have the reach. But if we sort of teamed up together, it sort of helps. There's a whole bunch of us, which has been, it's been pretty cool but sort of, to sort of work together and, and get to know it's, yeah, like I didn't know any of these guys beforehand and it's sort of become good mates with them. So it's, yeah, it's been pretty fun just to, just to work with all the other founders that were, that were here early on. This, this Twitter thread that you put up that says these are the people that you're most bullish on in the ordinal <laughs> space, and it's 10 tweets long. This has probably got to be 100 <laughs> different names on here. Do you know all these people one by one? And did you learn anything from this, I guess, just this Twitter thread of being able to you know diagnose over 100 different people? It might be even be 200 on here and uh, yeah, kind of see what type so. of similarities yeah there are between everybody. Yeah, I mean, I didn't start off as as wanting to do it so big. I sort of thought, oh, I think someone else tagged me in a post of like a bunch of people. And I'm like, oh shit, there's a lot of good builders here. And it was like, this is crazy. And so I thought, oh, I'll just, I'll just post about a bunch of people who I've sort of, I guess, gotten to know over the time, not gotten to know them all well, but I guess just interacted with over the time. And like, if I started sort of putting a few in and it just got out of hand and kept going. So it's, it definitely made me bullish to see how many, and especially now when everyone's sort of saying, oh, ordinals are dead or there's, <laughs> there's nothing happening to see that all those people that I did tag were people that are sort of, I guess, still building now, which is is pretty cool to see. So it's, uh, yeah, there's a lot still happening. And I think you will we'll notice with a lot of these things, it's, I think a lot of people are probably sitting on stuff that they've been building at the moment. And when things start to turn, I think we'll see a lot more coming out and it'll, it'll pick up pretty quickly, but it's, yeah, <laughs> it didn't plan to be so long. And then it just sort of kept going. And so it was cool to see how many there were. So it's still building. Yeah. So here, here's the, the stats. So point two Bitcoin, volume in the last seven days, which is two sales. Of course, at the time it's recording, the ordinal market just completely imploded on itself. <laughs> yeah. I think the volume's down probably like 80%. He listed out of 100 and the range 18,951 to 24,112. You have really good distribution. This was one thing I remember looking at that that caught me by surprise. The, the largest yeah. holder only has five and then the number 10 holder has two. And you have 80 unique yeah, is. holders. That is, that's quite unique. And getting an 80% distro is, is really, really tough to do, especially in a world like this that of Bitcoin where there are no smart contracts. Yeah. Um, and so it'd be so easy to, to kind of just swipe them all up. Yeah, it was, I've actually been, it, it surprised me initially. Uh, well, not initially. I mean, initially it was, it was one per person to buy them pretty much, but it, it's been pretty impressive our community, how they've, I guess, sort of held on i i'm, I'm used to ETH where like <laughs> things go things start to slow down and everyone undercuts but they've they've been super strong holders and like i think which is good and we've we've sort of done that purposely it's been a bit intentional not to really overhype things and have i mean we're called emojis but it's kind of the opposite of fomo it's sort of <laughs> we haven't done all those sort of hype things and people fomo in and sort of buy the top and then think oh shit Floors dumping quickly got an undercut. We've we've really built it pretty organically, and so people that have bought have known what they're buying into, and they're happy to hold long term. Sort of, they're not worried about the day to day sort of price movement. So it's yeah, it's been good. It's we had one big whale, and he's he's been awesome. He's helped sort of get new people in. If if there's one on the floor that they don't love, then he'll he'll trade with them. And that is he's he's running low now. I think he's only got four left, but. And the other big holder is Hashbender because he's sort of inscribed for us. So he got, which I don't think he's selling anytime soon. I think he's, <laughs> he's pretty invested in ordinals with the with the mining. So yeah, yeah it's been good our holder distribution. It's it's yeah, it kind of surprised me. I sort of thought we'd see more undercutters, but it's been awesome because I mean I'm obviously biased and bullish on the project, but it's good to see other people are as well. <laughs> I, I hope you are the most bullish out of everyone. That's what I want to hear <laughs> exactly. from my founder. Yeah, I definitely am. <laughs> so so here it looks like the just for those that are wondering, 0.175 Bitcoin is the all-time high sale to, to yep. Bitcoin in total volume, so around 60K so far. But as you... Yeah, move, and there's a bunch of OTC trades as well, which I probably should put in the Discord, but because it's, I guess, so easy to 
to OTC, but most of the volumes on Magic Eden. Yeah, and, and, there were, on Gamma, I think. and there was also 30 ETH in volume on, yeah, on OpenSea yeah. as well, right? So you're saying maybe about, yeah. maybe about over 100K total in volume, right? It's It seems low, but, you know, in this early space where there's really four of us that are kind of here... Yeah, you know, it's, uh, it's it's quite yeah, it's quite a yeah, quite an establishment. But now you, yeah, we haven't. Go ahead. Sorry, you go. Go ahead. I was gonna say we haven't had the crazy sort of like I said FOMO buy-in sort of thing. It's been that gradual build, which is and especially this last month, which has been good. It's even though things have been slow, our volumes sort of probably been our best volume the last probably two months. I guess because prices are higher, the volume goes up quicker. But it's yeah, it's been good to see people sort of coming on board and starting to take more notice of us. It's been a gradual build, but it's yeah, it's, we're definitely getting more recognition now, which has been good to see. And it's, I think with 2.0, it'll be good because we're going to get plenty more people in the community. But it's, it's not a rush at the moment with this market. <laughs> at the moment, launching would be tough. So we're just holding on to it for the minute. I mean, as the time, at the time of this recording, we saw a D-God's reveal and just implode. Yeah. So any <laughs> type, any, yeah. any, yeah, I mean, I think Frank will figure it out, but any type of, any type of surprises or news in the bear market, it just reminds holders that they're holding on to some value and then it just becomes a race to the bottom uh, so that they can kind of extract some of that out so they could survive kind of these very cold winters explain to me though what 2.0 is i pulled up this tweet from the end of june i know you've probably changed mm -hmm. or you've added some images to this originally or since then since it's, we're about two months since from the 2.0 take me through give me give me the spiel sell me this pen on famoji's 2.0 <laughs> Yeah, so basically what you're looking at now is the pre-reveal image. So with recursion, you can you can basically all the metadata is sort of encrypted so that the images are actually there with sort of with recursion. We inscribed all the traits and then compile them using this generate order, which is kind of the the standard we've created and it 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 renders them all. So they they are there, but it's all encrypted. So until we inscribe the key, which sort of decrypts them all, it's just that fallback pre-reveal image, which a couple of projects have done it. OCM sort of did it for an hour or so <laughs> before they, they revealed pretty much straight after the sale. But we've sort of kept it as a, I guess that's obviously a long reveal period. We haven't done the sale yet, but we think it's kind of cool because you get that, I guess, pre-reveal lottery, you call it sort of, it's, it's always exciting waking up on reveal day and sort of seeing what you got. So it's something which before recursion we couldn't do. And so it should be cool to see how that all goes when we sort of reveal it. It's still going to be a while away, but yeah, that's sort of the, the start of it is what you can see now. The other thing we've done with it is we've actually made the PFPs dynamic. So each person gets sort of, I guess, two in one in a sense, they get a light mode and a dark mode. So every day at, we kind of based it around health Finney and block 78s because it's all inscribed on block 78s but so at 708 a.m it automatically sort of transforms to the day mode and then at night again it, it, it goes to the night mode so people can choose between sort of light or dark because we we found that we liked a lot of the dark sort of i guess darker vibe but some people also like the light vibe so we thought well why not give them both sort of and they can choose so they they'll it'll always be linked to that inscription it's it's one inscription but they can choose which one they want to use as a pfp so it's yeah it's pretty cool there's heaps you can do with it we kept it pretty simple because i think with rarities and that sort of thing if we started changing all these random traits and, and made it all sort of changing every day it could <laughs> people could get a bit confused and they find something they love and then all of a sudden it's changed but so we kept it just to the background but it's i don't know it's kind of cool and i think we'll see more of it i know trevor's doing something with the the ninjas which is cool and there's there's going to be more people do a lot with it it's yeah it's it's a cool dynamic that i think we'll see a lot more of because it gives you the best of both worlds and it's not diluting it in a sense it's still the one token so yeah they're the, sort of the main things we've got a few more tricks up our sleeves but we haven't released it all yet but yeah, the dynamic is one of the, the main features of the art, which is pretty cool. Have you released the the supply amount? Do we know how yeah, much it we is? Have. So how much the is supply is 2009. Like? So it's it's on the higher end. I mean, it's I we we tossed up how big to do the supply for quite a while. It was I mean, we had the 10k project sort of going crazy when we initially started it, but we never wanted to go that big. It just there wasn't enough people in ordinals. And then we thought about maybe a thousand, but we thought we don't want to get, do a thousand and then feel like that's not enough. And so we sort of we went with 2009, and it's obviously an iconic number in, in Bitcoin. It's when when it all started. So we thought that was kind of cool to link it to that and similar supply to i guess other projects that have expanded i mean omb's 2100 i think and it's 
it feels like a good middle ground to sort of, I guess you can get enough community to get that network effect, but not dilute things too much. Have you mentioned what the mint price will be? And is there any sort any type of reward for the, the original owners of the, the 100? Like for example, I know OMB did this where everybody who owned the, I think it's blue eyes or red eyes, they got four mints. I believe with some other collections, they do some type of reward mechanism. Have you announced anything about that? With Is, is there any benefit to holding the original yeah. emoji before yeah, this mint happens? Yeah, so we haven't announced it officially yet. And same with mint price. We'll sort of leave that till closer to the date, but it's not going to be crazy expensive. We want it to be affordable for people. But the Genesis are basically going to get, one. Well, I wouldn't say a lot of the allocation, but they're going to have a say in a lot of the allocations. So the way we're going to do it, is it's a bit of a cross between what Pepos did and what OMB have done. So Genesis is only a hundred supply. So it's we will probably have a certain amount. They'll all get one airdrop for free, and then they'll get a, a certain number of whitelists and a certain number that they can nominate people they want sort of to to be on part of it. So it's I think it's a good way to try and get people they think are going to be good for the community. I mean, you, you might get people trying to submit burners and that sort of thing, but I think our community is pretty good and they want what's best for the project. So it's sort of it helps rather than and just all the, the giveaways and people botting giveaways and all that sort of thing. If they're picking people that actually feel like they're going to be a good fit, it should hopefully build a bit of a stronger community. So we haven't announced the exact numbers, but it's yeah, it's it's going to be a pretty decent allocation of the supply that Genesis holders will, I guess, have a say in. It's not going to be insane like they hold half the supply, but it's going to be, <laughs> yeah, we want to reward them. I mean, they've stuck by us and they the whole, I guess the whole point is to reward the Genesis holders. They should get the max benefits. So it's they're always going to get the most benefit, but we obviously other people coming on board will get plenty of chances. Right? I really did it, it like the, the OMB method of, I don't know if it, the Inscribe Pepe people did that as well, but nominating others to, to participate in the community yeah. through Mint. Of course, some people will sell, some people will maintain it. It just allows for a, a better distribution. I mean, I don't know if you could get to 80% again with these newer ones. <laughs> That'd be tough, yeah. But, you know, to try to get over, I'd say 60% is like a very good range yeah. to be in to where you'll have an adequate amount of, of trading activity, but also a large amount of of holding activity because that's kind of how you increase the floor price is a lot of people holding comparative to the amount of traders that are existing. So that's really cool to see. Yeah, I'm gonna I'll try to participate in that as well and see see where we go if there's any nominators out there. You know, <laughs> yeah. hook, hook your boy up. Yeah. But I, I, <laughs> yeah, I, I, we, we we talked about this before we we had this conversation, and this is what. The, the generate ord is what led me to reaching out to you to to have this conversation because I, I'm a big fan infrastructure. I work for an infrastructure company. I've really always been fascinated with you know kind of uh, you know the nuts and bolts of the, of the system. And right on the screen here, I've pulled up the the diagram that you have published. Although the generate ord is not live yet for others to use, from my basic you know monkey brain understanding, this is a way for people like me who have no idea how to code to dabble into the recursion ecosystem. But can you add some additional context to why generate ORD, why turn it into a product, and how does this make it simple for everybody else to participate into this like recursive, this new recursive life? Yeah, so it's sort of, it started, I guess, with our actual, with Remojis 2.0 as we we're building that out. We, we I guess, spent a fair while working out what was the best method and how we could do that most efficiency and, and efficiently. And sort of Vanix, who's our dev, sort of built this out. And it was, we had so many people reaching out to us saying, oh, can you help us with recursion? And like, there was just too much for us to, to help. Like, we couldn't help everyone. And so I thought, well, instead of trying to help everyone individually and, and explain it to them, why not just create a tool where they can easily, we can just say, go to this, input your metadata, input your traits, and then go from there out a sort of back end will do the rest for you so it's it took a while to build out and it's still it's i mean it, it works now but we haven't quite finished the front end we're just sort of i guess tweaking a few things and making it as, as simple as possible for people to use but yeah we feel like it's it's a good way to help people do it that don't have the technology because it's it's simple in a sense but it is complex as well so it's like if they can just sort of drag and drop pretty much what they need we can we can still help in a way if they need, but we feel like most people should be able to do it without too much tech knowledge. So it's, yeah, it should be good to to help people do it because we feel like this is the way forward for for sort of, I guess, higher supply collections. It's for one-on-ones and that sort of thing, there's no need because they're all the same art. But if you're doing more than, basically if your supply is more than the number of traits you've got, then this is cheaper and more efficient. So it's, 
I think it'll be pretty big in the future when things start to scale, especially <laughs> if these go like they did in <laughs> a couple of months ago. When you got a hundred sats for Viva, you don't want to be inscribing too many things. So it's um, Ooh, that was an expensive yes. time. That was a very expensive time. <laughs> so take take me that through this ex- take me through this example then, Sanj. Let's say yeah. I want to create ten thousand stoned emojis, right? I'm I'm, <laughs> I'm I'm creating a derivative of emojis, and I'm going to use the generate org. What do I need in terms of data files to use your product to make ten that this ten thousand piece collection? And then what is the cost on my side? Like, do I have to pay you is there a service fee to use this or is it just the inscription cost itself yeah so basically we're gonna the the second update we do will make it even easier but initially it'll be you inscribe the traits so basically the each individual trait with transparent sort of backgrounds and then you then inscribe the metadata which we've got a format for the metadata but it's basically the same as what people have to submit to marketplaces at the moment so you have the metadata which yes outlines all your trades etc and we've got a format that people can use and you you basically you would submit that to into our i guess front end it's all laid out pretty simply or where you got to do things and our thing will spit out there's a couple of things it'll spit out so it, it'll it sort of gives you all of these the source the process they're actually the six inscriptions that need to be done sort of the the source and the processor are the same for everyone but it'll give you the renderer and this fallback renderer if you want to do pre-reveal but we probably won't have that, have that initially. It's sort of we'll try and keep it simple because it can get a bit complicated. But basically, you put in your metadata, and it will it will I guess put together all of the HTML files that you then need to inscribe. So, and we will have the option that you can inscribe on our I guess with us as well to make it even easier. Initially, we might not. Have, we'll see. We're sort of deciding on 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 how to to do it initially, but. It's we want it to be as easy as possible. So they yeah, if you have the the traits inscribed, because everyone's the artist has got to make the traits, obviously. Mm-hmm. And it'll then sort of put together HTMLs. But it's I mean the metadata thing is still something that people might struggle with. And we we are building another product that'll be sort of included within it that will help put the metadata together easier as well. Cause it's still a little bit confusing sort of putting the JSON together and everything, but yeah, that's the basics behind it. And price was still, it'll be pretty cheap. It, it, it might be free to start with, we'll see. They obviously have to pay the inscription fees, but it's going to be fairly low priced initially. It's sort of, because we're kind of looking to follow what Manifold's done on ETH. It's, that's probably the closest comparison. It's, uh, I don't know, they started at a pretty low price. So we'll see how it works in terms of pricing, but it'll be, it'll be fairly low. Um, I mean, you'll be saving, It's I think it's it's close to like 95% sort of less in file size, especially with a bigger collection. So you're going to be saving a heap of money in terms of the actual inscription fees, but we might charge a small fee, but it won't be crazy to start with. It's sort of, we'll sort of see how it goes. I believe Manifold started as a freemium model. And then now it's, I believe a dollar per token that is minted. So if you follow this kind yeah. of source, it'd probably be something quite similar to that. Is this going to roll out at the same time as Fomojis 2.0 as well? Or are you treating these as two kind of separate products? Yeah, so they're kind of separate products. It, it probably might come out at a similar time. It's it's almost ready now. At the moment, it's probably not as necessary because no one's creating big supply collections because it's, things are pretty slow at the moment. But it's yeah, we'll, we'll try and get it as I guess as good as we can and ready. I think by the time two point zero comes out, it'll probably be this should definitely be ready to go. So it, it could be on a similar timeline. It's they are separate in a sense. It's not exactly the same i guess there i mean for emojis holders will probably get benefits from it if they want to use it they'll definitely be able to use it for free but it's not it's not completely linked as such so yeah we'll see how we go it's still deciding this market is i guess it's we're just watching things at the current market but yeah we've got a few projects that are using it at the moment just with us sort of privately so if people want to use it, they can reach out and we can sort of help them use it without doing the actual front end side of it. But yeah, we want to make sure it's it's all ready to go and it's it's not going to have any bugs or anything when we sort of release it. Something tells me that this is going to be more popular than all of your Fomoji products that that, that you're going to be putting <laughs> yeah, out there. Yeah. It's it's key infrastructure. There there is a massive need in the ordinal community 
four specific types of, of products that make it very simplified to, to create NFTs, to support different types of ordinals, right? All of these kind of emerging ecosystems, whether it's BRC20 or Bitmap or the generative art movement or all of this, it's all quite immature in its current state. I mean, we are only eight months in and it's scaled pretty fast to begin with, but there is still a lot of room to grow. Are you ready to become kind of this, you know, a product <laughs> operator more than, you know, a project owner? These are almost two distinct yeah. kind of, you know, hats that you have to put on. And if you compare it to the ETH, you know, the ETH side, we're seeing some of these PFP communities where the founders begin as project creators, and then they try to move to become you know, product operators, and it has not gone well so far <laughs> for most of them. Because, you know, one, if you're operating a product, you're generally more incentivized for financial returns. And if you're yeah. a project owner, right, if you're running like a PFP community, you're dabbling more so in the attention economy and you have to create artificial hype and you have to manage, you know, the community members. So they're, they're kind of, you know, they're kind of, it's kind of, you need like a yin and yang to be able to do it. How do you think you'll be able to wear two hats and, and run both? Yeah, things? it's going to be interesting. It's, we'll definitely want to scale things, I guess, the team a bit to, to try and separate it if it, if it becomes really big. It's to start with, we're keeping it, I guess that's why we haven't tried to hype it too much. We're keeping it <laughs> sort of low key and just, and just seeing how it goes initially. But we definitely feel like, and I guess with a lot of NFT projects, sort of there's no there's no royalties and you can't just keep selling NFTs for, for revenue. So it's it's definitely a revenue stream that could could be helpful in the future. But it's yeah, working out how it works with emojis we sort of we'll have to have a good think about that and, and see how it works. It's it's I'm not gonna be leaving I think Femojis is always my my priority, but I think tooling is massive and so if we can use it to help I guess for another source of revenue and also I guess just help other creators sort of build it's we haven't fully announced what we might do with it but we've got some plans to use it for something else but I won't say just yet but yeah it's it's going to be interesting and and like you said it's it is hard to juggle it's we will separate them in a sense it's not going to be all under the one umbrella cuz it's it's a it's a lot and that's it's partly why we wanted to make it as user friendly as possible so it doesn't take as much of of my time sort of we thought about doing it as sort of a launch pad but we found just helping a couple of different projects launch that launch pad takes a huge amount of hours <laughs> there's a lot of back and forth and it often ends up like you're just launching another project not mm -hmm. not fully but you you have to put a lot of hours into it so we we want it to be mainly the the creators of that project do most of it and it's just using our tooling so it doesn't take an enormous amount of time out of us but yeah it's it's going to have to be i guess pretty flexible and sort of agile as we go as we build it and see what works and what doesn't because ordinals is is always changing so yeah we're not set in stone for what we do with it yet vanix who's our dev that he's sort of the main man behind that the generate odd thing but we'll we'll definitely need to bring on some more people to help with it if it starts to grow so as long as you're prepared for yeah, it no, no. I mean, I know, I've, we're ready I, for it we we sort of thought about that for a while and and sort of thought do we want to get into the, the infrastructure side of things because it's but we felt it's a big gap that it can be a massive help for people to to sort of build out ordinals so we thought why not we've got it there why not make it easy for people to use so yeah there i mean there is a there is a trend it is quite obvious of where the the leaders of ordinals are going i generally start with some sort of pfp or some sort of image project and then you kind of move into the infrastructure side i had you you were doing this right you start with famojis and now you have generate ord i also had jerry on here who started with doge punks and then ended up with luminex and then started creating some other proposals on the other side i had on good who started with mxrc and now yeah. he's doing the ordinals and now he's doing also doing like kind of a recursive playground kind of idea and I believe the, the the reason why this is and kind of the heart of the problem that you mentioned is that there are no royalties on Bitcoin. It's it's mm. it's unlike it's it's unlike Ethereum where you have royalties set at an X amount and then the marketplaces kind of own that share and then it's a race to the bottom. Here it's just zero. It's it's a different type of environment. Do you think this is I guess you would say a bug of the ecosystem? <laughs> is it a feature and how hard is it for for a founder to navigate this kind of no man's land where there really is no business model towards monetization. It's really something that is unique within each project. 
Yeah, it is a tough one. It's sort of royalties has always been that, I guess, hot topic of is it good, is it bad? And it's on ETH, we saw it play out where it, they all sort of went to zero after a while. But it's I've always, it's always been the thing I've sort of wondered about NFT projects in general is how do you create a sustainable business out of it? It's sort of you make this massive sum up front and then it's like, what's the, I guess, I guess incentive to keep building? It's like you've just made millions of dollars and now you sort of, if royalties go, it's, there's no incentive for people to build. So it is, it is interesting in that sense. I mean, I think that some Bitcoin markets, I mean, some have put royalties in. It's pretty minimal and and volume's pretty low anyway. So it's it's never going to be a, a like a, a big revenue stream. I think we don't want to cash extract from our community either. It's sort of, I mean, our genesis was only 100. So it was a, a small sort of, I guess, amount of revenue coming in. It was like 40 ETH or something at the time we did it on ETH. So it wasn't crazy, but it, it helped give us a bit of runway to build to what we are now. But yeah, I mean, projects need to make money to continue building if they want to continue building. I think like our genesis is always going to be a collectible. Like it's, it doesn't need to have any utility. We sort of, and a lot of people don't want to have utility, but we kind of want to build other stuff as well. So that's where Generator Ord can help bring in some revenue. I mean, Fomojis 2.0 will be, we're we'll charging something for it, but it won't be a crazy amount, but it'll help. I guess, give us a bit of room to expand. But yeah, it, it is an interesting one, the royalties thing. And I don't know if anyone's found the answer yet of how you create a, a sustainable NFT project. I think using IP like what Luca with Pudgy Pen- Penguins has done has been a pretty big thing. And that's that's obviously difficult to do. I mean, we've got a pretty unique IP, which could be, has maybe a bit of sort of mass appeal compared to some of the darker sort of Bitcoin projects, but it's at the moment we're still focusing on the Bitcoin market. We don't really want to go down that path yet, but you never know. We'll see what happens. But yeah, it's it's a, it's a tough one finding the, the best move for, for NFT projects. But and as as your team, ordinals. yeah, as you mentioned, you you considered at the very at the very beginning of this episode, you said that you'd mentioned that you you looked into the ETH projects and kind of maybe having a cross-chain community. You ended up with building infrastructure and doing Fomojis 2.0. Did you look into any of the other components of the Ordinals ecosystem, maybe ERC-20 or the generative art or rare <laughs> sats? I mean, you're using Block 78 yeah. or something like Bitmap and Metaverse or gaming. Did the Fomojis team look into these other ecosystems at a possibility of maybe trying to move or add this additional feature that is Bitcoin native to the Fomojis ecosystem? Yeah, definitely. We sort of basically looked into all of it. I mean, I was sat hunting. I've been sat hunting for sort of a fair while, which has been good fun. And sort of always wanted to do stuff with the rare sats and we decided to do it on block 78s because it was a higher supply so it was and the block 78s aren't the main value but it's kind of a cool benefit i find it pretty cool being linked to halfini it's sort of just an added piece of the story and we've got uncommons and block nines that we're going to do something with as well but yeah it's we've we've thought about it all brrc20s i always found ridiculous but also <laughs> loved it as well you're not a Spent fan huh? day, Jenny. no i am a fan i i do like it it's just and I, it's probably because I, I missed out on a massive bag of audio because I, <laughs> I thought, oh, this tech can't scale. This is ridiculous. And so I didn't, I sort of faded it initially, but I mean, I still did pretty well sort of later on, but it's, yeah. I, and we looked pretty deep into it about what we could do with it. And a lot of people in the community sort of are sort of, oh, when FOMO kind, when this sort of that. But I felt like, I mean, I've seen it so many times on ETH that majority of projects that launch I guess NFT projects that launch a fungible token never doesn't end well most of the time. I mean, like I, I was sort of part of Cool Cats back in the day and their their milk token. It's almost like the token price then started to set the price of the NFT. It's like if you're only yielding this amount, then oh, that's NFT shouldn't be worth much. But it's not ne- that's not necessarily how it should be valued. The NFT was worth a lot before the token. And so we didn't want to link ourselves to a token, which is probably going to go down. I mean, it's real. It's pretty rare that it ever actually does well. I mean, even ApeCoin has, <laughs> has pretty much been down only. So it's it's a tough one. And if we had something that we could use it with and create utility with it, we definitely would look into it. But we didn't want to just throw out, a, I guess, a, I guess you could call it even a meme coin without having a reason for it. But I do love the BRC20s in general and, and what people are doing in them is pretty cool. Like Track, who's actually... They've got sort of utility for it and, and OXBT and stuff are, are building out on top of it. But we didn't want to, I guess, sort of set ourselves into that one sort of niche. We felt we also felt like keeping things as simple as possible is often better. 
make it too complicated, yeah, it can get a bit confusing for people. So we want to keep as much of it as simple as possible, and but we're always open to that. I mean, we, we inscribed Cursed pretty early on, sort of some Cursed emojis, which we know, <laughs> don't know when they'll be available, but they're sitting there sort of super low early Cursed inscriptions if that ever comes a thing. So that's something that could be fun in the future, but... Yeah, we've we've kind of stuck to recursive as our big thing. We felt like that's the, the one that's going to be the biggest long-term and going to scale the most long-term. So that's sort of where we've gone for now. Recursive cursed ordinals. That's that's your future, <laughs> right? Just combine, yep, just combine, all, combine all of the metas and, <laughs> uh, and you'll find some success. I do think you have the, the right idea of not launching a token unless you have a, a strategy behind it. If you look at ETH, you have... Milk and and Pixel and Ape and I think there there's way more. There's like two Pixel mm. tokens. All of those have kind of gone to zero, and it does drag <laughs> the NFT down because there is this like pseudo relation, as you had mentioned, of saying, hey, if the if the fungible token is worthless, then the NFT should be worthless, yeah. or vice versa, right? If the NFT is also worthless, and it's like why <laughs> why have this token associated with it, right? This this community currency of some sort, community value system. There's there's just, there's just really no point in it. So I think you guys are, at least from this conversation, I'm excited to see where you guys are going. It sounds like you have uh, a very firm understanding of, of what's required to grow the project. And as just a final question of just kind of the, the larger ordinal ecosystem, what, what are you looking forward to over the next we'll say the rest of the year through through 2023 is there anything outside of Fomojis that you're that you're actively watching or that's caught your interest that you just passionately enjoy yeah it's interesting there's I mean, a lot of it it's changing so quickly with ordinals it's like next week who knows it might be completely different i think reinscriptions could be interesting so i've been thinking about something which we could do with our Genesis, which could be pretty cool with reinscriptions. We, it's sort of initially I thought, oh, how can we use that as a benefit? But I've got an idea that could be pretty cool. I won't sort of spill too much on it yet, but I think reinscriptions is something that we could look into and could be something that can add value to inscriptions. It's, it's not a, another token as such, but you can, you can link it in this on the same set, which is kind of cool. So we're looking into that and there's, I mean, there's going to be heaps that pop up. It's sort of like with that post about all those builders, it's there's, there's people doing stuff everywhere. It's sort of, we don't know what will stick necessarily, but. There's going to be exciting stuff to come. I think I was saying to you earlier, it's this last couple of months has almost been a bit of a blessing in disguise because it's, it's given people time to actually build things properly and not just, I mean, when things were going absolutely out of control and parabolic, it was like people just throwing stuff out there and hoping for the best and like people coming from ETH and Soul and, and putting stuff out that they probably didn't fully know what they were putting out with ordinals. But I think now we've got the the builders who are building for the long term sort of given time to actually do stuff. Like I know Bob Bodel is doing some cool stuff and, and I mean, there's heaps of builders doing cool stuff, Danny from Onchain Monkeys. So it's, yeah, I think it's going to be good. And I think once we see the volume come back, it'll come back pretty strong it's just it's just a waiting game and we're all at least all of us in ordinals are pretty bullish on on bitcoin and and what ordinals can become it's sort of definitely never been so excited to be building on something i mean i didn't build on ETH as such but i also sort of felt it was more of a i was there for flipping and that sort of thing but i, I feel like ordinals there's, there's a lot underlying there that can be pretty big long term i mean bitcoin is is the the biggest chain and it's it's not going anywhere so it's yeah there's going to be plenty of exciting stuff coming i think and it's just people got to be patient because it's it's we're six months in which i think a lot of people it's it's hard to even fathom how early that is it's pretty rare you get the chance to be there from the absolute beginning of, of anything in tech it's like i mean you barely get that opportunity it's like being at the beginning of the internet or the beginning of ETH. If, we're, if we were there when ETH nft started it, it would have been pretty cool so you don't get this chance often so we're going to make the most of it and It'd be cool to see what people build. It's a matter of when, not if. That's it. Yeah. I believe 100%. that to be so. Sanj, I appreciate you for, for coming on, man. Really enjoyed this conversation. I'm looking forward to everything that you're doing and everything that you will do in the future <laughs> and, and build out. You have, I think, a pretty good project on your hands. And hopefully one day I can join the, the Fomojis community, maybe the 2.0 when you add the, the 2009. So appreciate you for your time, man. No, I appreciate it. It was, it was awesome to have a chat and sort of dig deeper into it. We sort of haven't had the chance to go right into the, the nuts and bolts of it all. So that was, no, it was awesome fun. So thanks, Ace, for having us on. Then next time we'll have to bring your dev and we could really dive into it for all, for all of the nerds out there. But pre <laughs> appreciate you, son. Appreciate all of you for listening and watching. We'll catch you next time.